Hello and welcome, I'm Tafra Gidamu. In mid-April, over 2,000 health professionals will be coming together to discuss major public health issues. What are they planning to achieve? My guest today, Professor Orlik Lesser, who is the president of the World Federation of Public Health Associations, and Dr. Toabesh Bishaw, a president of the Ethiopian Public Health Associations, are here to talk about that. A very warm welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Two months down the line, mid-April, uh, you're going to have a big Congress. This big Congress, co Congress is going to involve uh, over 2,000 uh, professionals, practitioners in the public health area and, and academicians and, and so on and so forth. Why for Addis Ababa to host this big Congress that comes once every three years? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, as you said, uh, yes, we are expecting close to between two to three thousand professionals attending this meeting. Uh, when uh, the uh, World Federation of Public Health Association identified a partner to to co-organize this congress, uh, there was a competition among different pu professional associations, public health professional associations, among which. One was the Ethiopian Public Health Association. And I think uh, it has to do with the strength of the Public Health Association. In Ethiopia, In Ethiopia, Ethiopia yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the activities, public health activities that are going on in the country uh, and the opportunities that it would provide to those people coming into the country, the connectedness of the country to various international participants and so on and so forth. All these were taken into consideration. And, uh, and the Ethiopian Public Health Association was selected to host. And uh, for us, I think it's an excellent opportunity because uh, uh, while a large number of professionals are coming to participate in this important global conference, uh, we'll also have an opportunity for our public health professionals to attend this conference, uh, whereby had it been outside this country, the opportunity to send more than 10 public health mm -hmm. professionals would have <laughs> been completely like impossible. So we have now a big platform where it would provide us the opportunity to learn from other countries. So I think the selection process took place in 2008. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this was one of the things, the strength of the Public Health Association, its membership and the activities that was involved in, and mm -hmm. the. But it took years. Health. But it took years of preparations and planning. Yeah, definitely, to it's not uh, it's the last uh, Congress was in Istanbul three years ago, and there the uh, Ethiopian colleagues presented in a very excellent way uh, their concept, and uh, so they were selected. But uh, from our side, from the World Federation, um, it was also a re an argument to go to Africa. Because uh, what you said, from mm. Africa, the participation in somewhere else in the world is very difficult to finance, to cover. And on the other hand, we have a lot of excellent colleagues here. So we thought it's worthwhile after the Congress in the early 90s in Tanzania to come back and to help develop the African public health. And if I say African public health, I mean also the recently established African Federation of Public Health Associations, which is a unique achievement bringing together all the African countries in terms of their public health professionals. That's the first time in the history. This is the second time that you're organizing a big conference in Africa. So it has basically been a... Uh, a European or North American no, issue? No, 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 that is not true. It was also in, took place in Beijing and in other places. Uh, but uh, Africa was the region which was not properly covered, historically speaking. But uh, the point is that um, the public health professionals, as a, as a professional group, they are responsible for the health of the population in general, for the conditions under which the people have to live. And uh, that is something which is not taken care of by the physicians, by the medical profession in the narrow sense. Public health professionals are all of other kinds of professions, not only physicians. And uh, it is also an issue which I would like to relate to the key uh, challenges today in the world. We have chosen the topic uh, towards global health equity, 
global health equity and that relates to the climatic changes which uh, damage uh, especially uh, certain developing countries. It uh, refers to the security, which is usually not considered an issue of public health, but is one of the key areas, public health and peace. And it uh, relates to uh, equity in the classical mm -hmm. sense. We just came back from the Rio conference some two, three months ago. And the fourth issue is uh, financial inequity in terms of uh, problems how uh, financial aid is delivered from the donor countries to the receiving countries in the way how financial streams are going around the world in a very unilateral way. In some cases, you can even see that the developing countries finance <laughs> the developed countries. But in uh, what way? In what way? Uh, by, uh, for example, let me use that. Uh, are, you, are you saying that much of the money is lost in the process of uh, being that transferred? Anyway, that anyway, <laughs> but uh, that's not so unusual. <laughs> but uh, the main point is, let's take a um, World Bank project where the country gets a credit from the World Bank. And the country orders for that credit equipment from the uh, developed countries because the machines are mm -hmm. only produced there. Experts come from the developed countries to that uh, country. Uh, they are paid from mm -hmm. that credit. And uh, then you have to relate, let's say, one million of credit to the outcome after five years. And very often you are very, very unsatisfied. So the money of the developed, uh, developing countries is lost for equipment and stuff, experts mm -hmm. coming from the uh, donation countries. Four, the four or five points you've just mm -hmm. mentioned are no new things. They have been discussed over mm -hmm. and over and over again. Yeah. What is new here? What's new is good <laughs> because uh, there are now we are talking and thinking globally as uh, equities mm -hmm. has become a global issue now. Uh, in the past, you know, it has not been a, a global concern and a global issue. Like when strategies were developed for primary health care, although the issue of equity was there, not in the big sense of talking about global equity, the financial uh, equity policies, uh, the, the interrelationship between countries, uh, within countries, uh, and so on and so forth. Now we also have the Millennium Development Goal that's also considered as one of the, 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 the platforms for the achievement of uh, health for all the population, including those that are marginalized. And in fact, it was uh, after assessing the primary health care goal of achieving health for all by the year 2000, mm -hmm. that the Millennium Development Goal was, was established. And then within this, equity has become one of the greatest aspect and uh, integral component of the Millennium Development Goal. So in this Congress, what we are talking about is also uh, the Millennium Development Goals. African countries are struggling uh, to move, moving towards achieving those goals. And not only achieving <coughs> those goals, but sustaining those goals after the 2015 deadline. Uh, in, within the Millennium Development Goals, developed countries have also been charged with the responsibility of supporting the financing and facilitation of this. Is this happening? We have only three more years now. Is this only next door. Next door. So is this happening? So in this discussion, in the, in the Congress, we're going to address some of these issues. Is this happening? Has the developed countries con made their contributions that have been committed by them to support the developing countries, strengthen their capacities to enable them to achieve? Uh, in fact, a 7% uh, allocation was, was agreed upon by many of the developed countries to contribute to the developing countries to enable them to achieve the goals. Like, uh, So is this happening? Well, influenced so by what was then unforeseen circumstances, yes. like the economic crisis that you, you find around. Okay, but but what are we there. doing? That's a very interesting. What yeah. is being done from this side to kind of match it up? Yeah, no, I think uh, your the background of your question is, is there really some concrete success? Mm -hmm. Or what is the instrument by which we want to achieve that? And I think we have to concentrate on the professional um, public health workforce. Those are uh, people in all thousands of people. Actually, we represent as a global organization about 250,000 
public health professionals, but they have two deficits which make it very difficult for them to achieve everything what they need. One is their education. We work uh, very strongly on the standardization of the public health education in the terms of Master of Public Health programs and so on, development and competences, uh, catalogs, and performance standards. And um, the um, certification of them. Uh, other professions are well-established mm -hmm. physicians with a certificate which allows them to uh, act in a certain way autonomously. Uh, and that is not true in most countries for the public health professionals. That's why, for example, we have one uh, session on a certification and the United Kingdom model is explained, which is the most advanced in this regard as a model for other countries to develop that. So that is one key issue in the Congress, mm -hmm. just for an example. And, and, and also the participation of the, Afri the Association of African Schools of Public mm -hmm. Health in this conference, and the Association of African uh, Public Health, the Federation of the African uh, Public Health Associations here is going to bring the professionals and the institutions of learning uh, to sit together and, and uh, dialogue in the true sense whether what's happening is indeed helping countries develop the professional capacity to enable them achieve those uh, goals and standards that have been achieved. So the professional association coming out strongly in this platform would, uh, would give them the freedom to articulate issues from practical point of view, because these professionals are out in the research centers, as you are, as you said earlier, in academic institutions, in service uh, delivery points, in policy formulation areas. So, so the professionals are now talking from the professional point of view, in terms of how best can we package and and strengthen this uh, capacity. To, to but, but there are, you mentioned a host of issues, yes. you know, capacity training, service, and so on and mm -hmm. so forth. But the problems are so complex that any form of intervention will never be able to address all these problems. Oh, and what I'm saying done. is you'll be able to discuss mm -hmm. those issues, but then what? No, that's why I say we must go a step uh, back one uh, level to the towards the reasons or origins of the present situation. And one is the uh, training and formation of the public health workforce. It's very interesting and we re really succeeded to change that. Even the World Health Organization recently issued uh, conference documents not even mentioning public health, although it is the organization yeah. for public health. And uh, they all concentrate on medical uh, disease orientation. So this is, uh, we have to think more structurally, in structural terms, how is the health organized? Do people have access to health facilities? Can they be supported to have access? Are they treated mm -hmm. properly there or are they refused? Uh, all these in investigations are done by public health uh, professionals and should be done by them. Here, you, I assume you're mentioning an issue of public policy. You mm -hmm. yeah. would be public influencing policy public policy. It's is our domain. Mm -hmm. The public health is uh, actually described as epidemiology, the analysis, the management of the institutions, which is, again, mm -hmm. our area, and uh, the uh, policy development, not to mention uh, some two or three other areas, but uh, public health policy is a core issue of public health. And you're going to work with governments, right, if you want yes. to influence public <laughs> yes. policy? Yes, we do. Yes, and, and uh, one of the beauties of the professional associations is that we have professionals that also work within the government system. Mm -hmm. So bringing all those together in this platform and uh, to be able to articulate some of these issues would influence what's happening at, at, uh, at the office level in terms of policy development, policy formulation, strategy development, analysis and, and, uh, and, and assessment. Uh, so uh, like for instance in this Congress, uh, the, uh, uh, which we are organizing jointly with the World Federation of Public Health Association and the Ethiopian Public Health Association, the Minister of Health is our the patron. There is a national planning committee 
uh, that involves multi uh, uh, different sectors, development partners, and so on and so forth. So the health minister is there. So whatever is generated out of this consultative process is going to uh, to feed into what's going to happen within the health policy, within the health strategy of Ethiopia, as an example. Mm -hmm. But also, at the end of the, consul the, the Congress, there is going to be a declaration. It's, uh, this one is going to be the Addis Ababa declaration. And this declaration is going to be uh, submitted to the World Health Assembly, the WHO Health Assembly, so that it has an opportunity to to be tabled as, as an issue of interest, of global interest, because this is the result of uh, in a dialogue, in interaction, and so on, of professionals at, at highest levels, uh, and agreement deduced out of those consultations, uh, so that it will have an opportunity to influence global health policy, regional health policy, and national health policy. How revolutionary is that going to be? I mean, oh, revolutionary. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> evil uh, okay. <laughs> what I'm saying is, yeah. what are you saying that has never been said Safe. before? No, uh, in this in this declaration, yeah, yeah. I feel that all the time behind your questions, and you are right. It's uh, in that sense not necessarily new, but we reorganize our federation. Uh, we are now not in Washington anymore, as it was before, but in Geneva. We are officially related to WHO. We have access to all the meetings, and Geneva is called the capital of health, of the world capital of health, because almost all health-related organizations are there. So we are much more effective now in influencing and uh, feeding uh, the, uh, as you said, results of our consultations into the political process via a World Health Organization, via the EU, uh, European Union, via the uh, African. African. And for example, um, what we developed here in Africa with the African Federation and their task profile is uh, given as a model to the Pacific nations because we've uh, developed the same kind of mm -hmm. cooperation there. And uh, the next step is also to link with, or actually we started already, to link with the Ara that's a revolution, the Arab revolution, because uh, now they question the whole public health system. And I will travel next uh, month to um, Beirut and to uh, Riyadh probably to discuss with them how to reorganize their public health system according to the mm -hmm. models mm -hmm. partly we developed here. Yeah, and also the, the African Federation of Public Health Association being uh, born recently after a long uh, process, uh, and this was supported also by the uh, regional uh, regional office uh, for WHO in yeah. Brazzaville. Mm -hmm. Uh, the the regional director was up in the in the limelight uh, assisting the the formation of this. This uh, do you know in Africa there are uh, f over fifty some countries, 48. and forty eight mm -hmm. of those countries are members of the uh, the WHO regional office in Brazzaville. Uh, out of the forty eight, twenty seven were present during the formation of the the association. Uh, so now what we also did strategically is that Ethiopia, being the seat of the African Union, being the seat of the Economic Commission for Africa, we also have been charged with being the Secretary General of the African Federation of Public Health Association. So I, as the President of the Ethiopian Public Health Association, am um, now the Secretary General of the African Federation of Public Health Association. And the seat of the African Federation of Public Health Association is has been decided to be here in Addis Ababa. So this kind of networking and, as he said, strategic approaches, although we have been saying this in the past, the modalities to make this functional were not there. So now through these mechanisms and arrangements, the, the opportunities and possibilities to influence, to, to contact and interact is increasing. But so is that, that's, that, that's interesting that you mentioned the Africa-wide initiative by public health professionals. Yeah. But look, I mean, next week, African leaders are 
coming to town, yeah. and they will be talking about issues that are remotely related to what you're talking now. No, they have more issues than that, of course. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. At the end of the day, at the no, end of the day, it's no, not it's uh, not just having said, uh, public health associations across Africa having uh, such a robust institution that would influence policy making, decision making, and all, and everything. But you're not making a difference. Look, in 1967, you were bo you were established in 1967. Yeah, but that is we knew. <laughs> Literally knew nothing no, about uh, about yes, the World the Federation. Yeah. The Ethiopian Health uh, Public Health Professor established 1989. You've been yeah. trying to do something, but yeah. again, the issue but is now, not worth considering you, by African you leaders. Hear about them. Now you hear about her. <laughs> 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 no, the point is, you asked her, what is revolutionary, and I answered evolutionary. I think public health is concerning not one single person, but the whole population cannot be revolutionary without damaging something. We have to have enough patience to uh, follow an evolutionary process. And there's a lot of evolution. Uh, if you look at the child mortality rate mm -hmm. here, that's due not to anybody else but public health professionals that you brought down the infant mortality and child mortality rate uh, to a reasonable level. level. And uh, according with MDGs, and that is true for many other countries. The success stories that we're talking about within the, the health system is a sum of what has happened in the health sector, what has happened in the education sector, what has happened in different development sectors, and, and also the role that professionals play in terms of linking all this up at various levels. So now, through this consultation, uh, of the world, uh, the thirteenth World Congress, uh, we are expecting that a lot of the critical issues that are uh, that many of the African countries are scrabbling with, especially achieving the Millennium Development Goals, which means that looking at the entire system, uh, including policy, uh, community participation, uh, sustainability nutrition, emergency, and all related things have to be seen. So health is not just a health issue. Health is a multi-sectoral development issue that requires to be tackled from different angles. So within this um, multiple scenario of actions that are needed to influence uh, the health condition of a population, what are the best, uh, the best, uh, the best ways or the best mechanisms or modalities of um, that the health professionals can play so we are looking at the role of the health professionals we have we have to see uh, you know it's evolving uh, the influence that professionals are making is becoming more and more evident now governments administrations and so on are looking at the value added by engaging professionals into their development processes and scenarios. So it is a struggle. But look, yeah, it is, I, I understand. But, but people are trying really hard to feed themselves. And yeah. you're talking about, some, about nutrition. It doesn't make sense, does it? No, we are talking about nutrition. Uh, in fact, one of the areas that we're going to talk about within this, the issue of equity is, is nutrition. Uh, yes, development, like we say, our development, economic growth has, uh, you know, uh, is growing by double digits, triple digits, and so on. Yes, so be it. It's good that we're getting there. But has it changed the face of the population? Because at one time there was an issue called development with a human face. Has we changed the livelihood of the majority of the people? So these are some of the things that professional associations are bringing to the table. Yes, development is good. Yes, our, uh, our economy is growing by double digits. But then that will not be consistent if we say that on one side and then continue saying we cannot feed our people because this growth has to be feeding into the development processes so that sustainable people-centered actions have to be taken into consideration. And so this is it. Like, you know, the platform is going to raise this over and over again. Right. I mean, you have to be able to help people feed themselves before you can talk about um, the issues yes. that are... Uh, it's a question. Uh, I mean, first, uh, the uh, lack of uh, nutrition, uh, underfeeding of people, 
is uh, partly uh, or actually mainly a question of the economic development. Mm -hmm. If there's more money, then uh, you can, like China, uh, take them out of this sector of poverty. But on the other hand, there was a very nice um, declaration, uh, not a study, on macroeconomics and health. And uh, they very convincingly, and since that is tradition, um, they reverted the sequence. It's not that first the economy comes and then health, which is partly, of course, true, but also that an economy cannot flourish with a sick population. And they calculated that very exactly. So the governments are uh, strongly um, influenced uh, to invest in health as a factor to develop the economy. As a development input, mm -hmm. yeah. yes. Development Healthy people, mm -hmm. strong people, productive people as input into development. Well, good luck uh, and thank you. <laughs> thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure <laughs> being on the show. Thank you so much.